Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the October edition of the 2022 Glaze webinar series. Today's presentation is Plant Factory Innovations in Japan. My name is Haley Holly, and I'm the Extension Specialist with the Greenhouse Lighting and Systems Engineering Consortium, otherwise known as Glaze. Um, and before we get started with the webinar, I'd like to, as usual, extend a huge thank you to all of our members, the, both the industry and the CEA members of Glaze. Uh, thank you so much for your support. It's because of all of you that we can promote activities like this webinar and offer them to such a wide range of people. I would also like to take this opportunity to highlight the 2022 Glaze Summit, which will be happening in person at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York on Tuesday, November 8th. And there's also a reception at 5 p.m. on Monday, November 7th for anyone who's gonna be there the evening before. We have an awesome lineup of speakers for that day, and you can see those speakers on the schedule by looking at the link here at the bottom, glaze.org slash 2022 summit. You can also register on that page. Registration is still open. You have until November to do that. Um, and if you're already a Glaze member, just send me an email. Glaze members uh, get to attend for free. So just let me know that you want to come and I'll make sure you get on the registration. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our presentation for today. And remember that there is a Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen that you can use to ask questions about the presentation throughout the whole presentation. We will save time at the end to go through those questions. Today, we are happy to have Dr. Iri Hayashi, and she is joining us from the Japanese Plant Factory Association, though she's actually tuning in from Cornell University right now. She's been there since this weekend. Dr. Hayashi is the Vice President of the Japanese Plant Factory Association, also known as JPFA. It is a nonprofit organization devoted to academic and business advancements in the plant factory industry. She has a keen interest in technological advances, including phenotyping and plant factories. She received a PhD from the Graduate School of Horticulture in Chiba University. And whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and share your screen and get started. Sure. All right, so you see my screen okay? okay. Yes. Okay. So hi everyone, good afternoon. I can probably say good afternoon because I'm in the United States Eastern time. So I'm Eri Hayashi from Japan Farm Factory Association. Thank you, Harry, for the kind introduction. So it's an honor to be invited and by Glaze seminar and thank you very much. So um, today I would like to, um, let me change this. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I'm happy to share the innovations of our sustainable plant factory today. Um, so I'd like to introduce a little bit about the organization first, and then what is going on on the plant factory industry, and then the challenge, and for the next generations. So Japan Plant Factory Association (JPFA) was founded in 2010. Um, with a mission to develop and introduce sustainable factory system uh, with a collaboration with academia. Uh, we are supported by 200 company members and individual members and then 15 to 20% uh, international members. Um, so vision and mission is to develop and introduce a sustainable plant production system um, with a help with a um, to help solve the global issues such as food, energy, resource, or people's health for humans and quality of life. So we uh, mainly do four activities like research and development, ongoing 20 research projects every year um, with a collaboration with academia, industry, and on-site tour. Uh, you're more than welcome to visit us. I think the Japanese government just opened the border after COVID. Um, we received, before COVID, we've been receiving 5,000 people per year, 40% was international, and workshop training, and then standardization committee activities, and a technical business support. So here we are. So as you can see, um, 
it's like a showcase of housing trying to show introduce a different system so that we can get to understand what it is before you start so you there's uh, uh actually the association name is plant factory but we actually focus on cea which include the greenhouse and a plant factory or body crop farm so uh, greenhouse there's 10, 15 greenhouses plant factory uh some um some recycling uh, facility as well. So we are city uh, the, based on the city called Kashiwanoha campus uh, that actually focused on the agri-driven smart city. Um, so we are here. And then on the, in the city, there are a couple of different sides of the system, um, home use, um, rest for restaurants, small size, and then seedling productions and a medium scale, that's cute one, like a dome house. And they actually this dome one um, is used also for the house or hotels as well. Um, it's also, uh, the inside is a plant factory on site on campus. And then the large scale production as well. So this is a map. You can see each facility have a different research topic uh, every year or every couple of year, the research topics change, and then the, you install the different system in the, uh, uh, depending on the research goal. Uh, some are working on aeroponics or uh, high bricks tomatoes or seed propagation strawberries or uh, the organic fertilizer. This is for the ornament, ornamental plant and also indoor breeding projects, or um, some were working on the indoor automation system by the company called Obayashi. The Obayashi is one of the largest engineering company in Japan doing the automation in plant factory, and also the phenotyping projects and, and more. So pro, I will, um, the, today's main topic is about plant factory. But um, probably since you also working on the greenhouse, so this is a picture of the plant, one of the plant for, uh, the greenhouse on campus. Um, so since in Japan we have a hot and humid climate, especially in the summer, um, so in, instead of um, growing one crop per year, uh, there, there's this greenhouse doing a four crops per year, uh, so that I. Uh, you can actually transplant using the tray. And, and then you can, since you are growing four crops per year, you can change the varieties. So it looks like that and high zen seed. And then, um, so fixed bench, three trusses, four crops per year, six blocks, and then by 10, 10 are um, 5,400 plants like that. And also, um, there are many systems uh, in the trial. This is commercialized system. Uh, it's a company called Ikeuchi. Also, they, I think they have an office and a business in the United States as well. Um, they have a really good, uh, very fine, dry uh, fog, fogging system. So it's very, very fine um, fogging. So uh, you, don't, you don't get wet. So it's very fine. So it probably might be interesting. Some of you might be interested. So, so you can check the, their website. And then this greenhouse working on ornamental plants and are using uh, organic um, fertilizer research. So a lot, there's a lot going on. And also the training course and the workshops. The workshop is going to be running 150 times. Uh, we have almost monthly workshop and some are in English. And I think so far 16,000 people have joined for her so far the past 10 years. So some we last, I think it last time in the 148th one, last June we had um, a speaker from Infarm and a planning farm from Italy and it was quite interesting talk. So I, um, I hope we hope to, I mean, update you and whenever I especially have an English <laughs> seminar. And also the training course, um, it's, it's, it's on, mainly online. And now just, we just started the strawberry course. Um, so anyone interested, you can check our website or our LinkedIn. 
um, it's yeah, it's gonna be fun. Okay, so the topic. So I would like to talk about the plant factory with artificial lighting. Before. So the most interesting thing is that the cultivation room is highly airtight and thermally insulated. It's a completely closed environment. Roughly speaking, the number of the exchange of air per hour would be like a 0 0.01 per hour. So meaning like you will, the air in this room is will be completely changed in 100 hours. So this is a really closed environment. So that with that, you can visualize input and then output, even the waste online that you can estimate online, and even the resource efficiency or even the productivity. So meaning that the more you produce, the grow the plants and you are continuously uh, creating the data. So I think that lots of, um, lots of research have been done for the past 60 or 100 years. And then our, the, common um, goal is like, how do we find the environment, the ideal environment that we want with multi-objective function? So we got a freedom because you can, it's an endless combination, but we got a freedom to design, but since it's too complicated, um, it's hard to find. And then we have a different goal. And then I, theoretically we can achieve high productivity, uniformity, consistency, and reproducibility. But the reality is that there is so much space to be improved um, because you want to achieve more uniformity and then re reproducibility. So that I mean, that even though you have a result from the lab, doesn't mean that you have a same result that for the large scale commercial production. So the scalable system is needed. So the goal of the plant factory is that to maximize the yield with the highest economic value with minimum use of resource and minimum emission of under given climate, social and economic condition and to provide the stakeholders a higher quality of life. So I think we have to discuss more on the quality of life, how we can use this system to change the world or the, to, to solve the really serious problem that we facing. It doesn't mean that for the to poverty, but also the quality of life uh, to, reduce the stress, we'd be happy or fun to have fun. And so since the cultivation room, it's highly airtight and thermally insulated, given that uh, there's factors ensuring the evolutionary characteristics of plant factory, um, bringing about su successive um, improvement of productivity, including the high observability with sensor so that we can achieve the high traceability with database, and also the high controllability with actuator, meaning that high reproductivity based on analysis and a high predictability with models. So the model that means not always about AI with a black box, or then, but uh, we can utilize the past model that we have lots of the research, great researcher has been working on the models, uh, gross models, many models, the so mechanistic or multivariate statistical or behavior surrogate model, and also the artificial intelligence model. And also with that, so we can uh, get the online estimation of hourly rate of net photosynthesis or water uptake or transpiration based on CO2 and water balance equation. So it's, it's completely closed environment. So it's simplify the thing. So you actually can see the difference with input and output. And then with the formula that you can relatively uh, easy, easy to figure out the speed of the, the activity of what's going on with plants. And also the online estimation for resource use efficiency, productivity for based on the resource applied or the productivity or the monetary applied or each resource element or also the standardization and integration of most hardware and software units. So it sounds like a, almost like a smartphone that we can imagine. So we have a common hardware, but there's so many different apps, applications. So I think the plant factory really can go well with the smartphone, how it works and how we use. So this is one of the example of the visualization of rate variables and the not only uh, state value like uh, uh, temperature, humidity that you can actually get uh, net photosynthesis or like rate variable like this. But this is the uh, first step. So visualizing the 
um, the rate variables, but also our goal that we work together on is that to, since we visualize this, we have to achieve the real time monitoring and then we find a ultimate set point in real time. I think this figure have a lot of cause. This is lots of discussion. It's very interesting discussion, but this has a relatively old study that comparing the resource use efficiency in the plant factory and greenhouse. So you can see here the water CO2 fertilizer seeds compared to the maximal theoretical value that plant factory have achieved relatively high value, but uh, there's so much space to be improved for the light energy and electric energy. So that's uh, things that we need to work on. And uh, speaking of the electric consumption by component of in the fairly airtight, it has to be fairly airtight family insulated cultivation room. The ratio of how it used for the electricity is that 70% or sometimes depending on the climate of outside, but 75% is used for the LED lights and then 20% for the HVAC for air conditioners and then 10% pumps for other equipment, depending on the level of the automations. Then I think we all are aware of the water use efficiency that we can recirculate on the water uh, since it's closed environment. And uh, uh, theoretically we can reduce 90% of water uh, compared to the outside. But something is not discussed usually is that this is for the cultivation. But if you are commercial production that you are actually using a lot of water for cleaning. Um, so I think we need to work more on the development system for development, also like material development, and how we can reduce the water usage. And also there's an interesting statistics in Japan that we have worked on survey that just use a new water because of the quality. So, but, you know, the, considering the water scarce in the world, why that problem, uh, we need to work seriously on this. So the history and the current status of the plant factory market in Japan, uh, it started with high pressure sodium in 1980s. At that time, uh, only one layer um, cultivation on the distance from the lighting. And then after 90s, um, the more farms started with a fluorescence lamp um, and becoming the multi tiers um, racking system. And then after 2009, Japanese government started the, uh, the government subsidy program. So a uh, lot of companies start building the plant factory, especially 2012, uh, LED started to be used more. But the Japanese company, uh, Japanese government are not giving money just to build that anymore because it's not healthy uh, in, in the end to develop the industry. And I would say uh, the successful plant factory have never got a subsidy to be successful. <laughs> yeah, so well, there are many discussions about that. But it's good to be have like a set incentives or like some program like electricity usage, or I think it's a lot of, I mean, um, things that we need to, um, there is, we, it really helps I mean, to have those kind of programs. And then after 2017, I would say like a fourth generation entering into the scalability, the more, lot more larger scale production. Um, the, the size of the, each farm got bigger, I would say. And then not only to supermarkets, because you, can, you have a mass production, you can do business with a food service or large, large company, food, food company, uh, including the convenience store like used for the sandwich or salad. But then you have to guarantee the quality or the quantity so that you have to have a stable 
mass, good quality production. And then you have to prove the cleanness and the quality. And then that you can prove with the data that you create daily production. And also automation, I will get that in detail afterwards in the AI and the phenotyping that many are working on and the breeding, indoor breeding project and also the collaboration. So I'm not, I heard here that a lot of United States company are not working together relatively compared to the Japanese company, probably um, more secretive, but um, Japanese company start to collaborate more recently for the selling parts if, if you have more like a customer and then you you need more produce and then you talk to your competitors and they help you supply and if you because it's better than throwing out or something so but this is example but it's, it's a young industry so you will have to work together at a certain point so the number of the plant factory in japan is roughly speaking is 200 but this includes a small system uh, but then I would say the ratio of the large scale plant factory is increasing. So let me uh, start introducing a couple of the uh, interesting, uh, I shouldn't say good, but I mean, as a neutral standpoint, but uh, interesting companies uh, in a different um, perspective. So I will start with AOA factory, uh, data driven operation. So their mother company, uh, actually the AOA factory is not the company name. So if you wanna look for the company website, it's a AOA factory website, but the, they're in the part of the company called uh, Shin Nippo. So the Shin Nippo is a pachinko slot company, the pachinko so the amusement, pachinko sorting machine. So they have a good sensing technology. They also do on um, the other business like a solar power, um, divisions or other um, well, hotels. So, and so they have started production in 2014. They act, uh, they, some other company built the first factory. And then the second factory, they did the design themselves. Uh, so the first factory was DFT system. The second factory was NFT system. So now in total, they produce 20,000 heads of letters every day, uh, four kinds of letters, leafy letters. Um, and the building looks like this. It's located in this uh, prefecture, Shizuoka prefecture. It's uh, very good close to, if you take bullet train, probably like one hour um, by bullet train. And uh, it's uh, close to um, the prefecture in the, where the Mount Fuji is located. So they have solar panels on here and the first factory and second factory is connected to each other. So actually it's in the same building. And then they share the one packaging room or storage. And then this part is office. You know, this company is very clean and it, um, it's amazing that even the restroom of the office is super clean, so shining. I can't, I always, I mean, get amazed at how clean even the bathroom is. And then you feel really sorry that using the bathroom because it's too clean. <laughs> so the, um, the cultivation room looks like this. Every time I go there, it looks like this clean, floor is shining. But if you take a look closely at the de detail of each design, you find a lot of things are different from the first factory. And this is the picture of the second factory. And this is, you see the shape of this um, um, still here. And then even the, this is the round, they have a reason to be this shape and, and because you, they care about the cleanness and, and the and the process. So I always say that um, probably it's, it looks easy to build the farm to copy, but they have to, they said that it's really important to consider the um, the process management, the process procedure taking into account for the design. And then they also said that uh, the first, when, right after you open the factory is okay, but the problems start to begin, tend to start probably after three years because you have to do maintenance, cleaning and things, pump something. So it's a good farm is you have the design, considering the operation, the maintenance ability is very important. So they technically send, do collect data, everything, and they even measure resource use efficiency, hygiene efficiency every day, even the waste. And this is the robot, the transplanting robot. They 
developed. And uh, we are very common to use a substrate of urethane form. Uh, so we cannot use just the same automation system used in the greenhouse industry. So there is a custom made design that took a couple of years to fine tune. And they also have a very playful touch TV commercial theories. And this is one of my favorite that the famous TV act, kids actress um, do some raps and sort of singing inside the factory that how clean and how, how tight tech and no need to wash. And, and so it's very fun. So like promoting no need to wash vegetable and consumer awareness. So you can see these details on um, specs in the book. So I appreciate how open they are that they're, they're showing everything that even the details of the size of the each rooms. And you can see the, uh, the ceiling uh, from is six meter and then they have 12 tiers. And it's really short uh, between each layer. Then I will compare with Aerofarm that you are familiar. Then this is also in the book that they have 12 tiers in this 11 meter. So you see that how the distance is different. And also the AOA factory and monitoring everything, even tracking the hands of all the workers and are going to improve and trying to improve the process management. And so this is the produce that they have. Uh, four kinds on the, the morphology difference. So they said that um, if you have a different morph morphology and they each have a different um, plant response, so they have to set the different environment. Okay, next company called Spread. Uh, they're based in Kyoto. Uh, they start their first factory in Kameoka. Uh, they started with DFT system. You, you see the water here. And then this is the second factory. There's a cultivation room is automated. So there's no, no one inside the cultivation room. And you see how um, narrow, short, narrow, narrow that the short distance each layer and you see the reflect, reflection sheet. So it's, it's, it's like a closed system. And then it's very common in Japan to use this white reflection sheet so that to maximize the light use efficiency. It looks like this. And also they on uh, the spread on uh, had a partnership with the energy company called Enels Group. It's really big energy company. And they on the energy company Enels uh, started the company called J Leaf and they're in the, close to Narita Airport, Chiba Prefecture. So they uh the they built a large scale farm, the 30,000 three ton heads of lettuce uh, production. And uh, it's the layer is uh, 28 layers um, of cultivation rack. It's really high. Um, so it also automated system. So different company called Ito Denki is uh, automated um, uh, automation company. Uh, they have a roller motor system. I wanted to introduce this company because um, not only like an NFT or DFT because they have an individual like a tray, the cell based modular type cell tray and then they you see how narrow the distance is like you want baby leaf and then they have a underground um, factory for demonstration and uh, they have uh, this uh, i mean power roller i think it's internationally based uh, um i mean they are doing business but they they have a transportation system so they can transport this tray and all, speaking of the automation, the fully automated plant factory is in Fukushima prefecture. So as this one also in the uh, individual tray, and then you see this monorail, this is running up and down, it's very busy, trying to pick up the tray, trying to put in the tray and then move to the, um, the harvesting like that. So it's a fully automated. And also interesting company called Kidaya short in Greenland. They have a multiple location. And also interesting thing is that beside their production, uh, production, they have an alliance network and they are supplying more than 10 tons of leafy green every day. So it's a lot of fun. And also they have a great uh, know-how for growing the large heads of um, lettuce. Then an interesting thing is that they started 
uh, they, they are farming, they are operational company. So they started, the, the other company built their farm, but they accumulated know-how uh, and then they started to design themselves. And now also besides uh, operation business and then as a farmer, they also supply, sub, uh, supply the, do the turnkey solutions, uh, supporting business. So that first um, they can design for you and then um, they can even introduce a favorite site location and then also the reutilization idle space or building. And then also the interesting thing is that if you have want to get a support for the cultivation because you don't have experience so that they can support your cultivation. They also personal training because they have a production facilities. And then they, they actually can buy and sell the produce. So it's a, it's a good cycle. Also the Mirai, the based in our neighbor, the Kashiwanoha, uh, they are a large scale production. They also have, um, they also uh, sell the, uh, lots of basil as well. So not only the farmer, but also interested in supplying engineering company as well, the company called Especmic. They have been doing business, plant factory business more than 30 years, um, building this kind of di different chamber or small or medium or even large scale. They also do lots of research on doing strawberry or wasabi or many, many kinds of uh, uh, plants. And another startup, startup called Plantex, uh, you see the cultivation rack a completely closed system. They have installed a system for the large scale production and a collaboration with a large uh, retail store. So speaking of the cost, and uh, then good uh, company are uh, getting profitable. And then if you can, the, the average cost breakdown, of course, the labor, depression, capex, and electricity is a major three cost. And then electricity ratio has been decreasing, but then now the electricity price is going up. So it's another new issue, but the labor is a major uh, cost. And then if you look closely, the labor uh, ratio, our per operation process for leafy lettuce production, you see the harvesting and the packaging accounts more than 50%. And it's interesting to see that compared with the greenhouse that the greenhouse uh, tomato landscape greenhouses, you have a cultivation management, but uh, for the plant factory, like a cleaning is actually more than 10%. So it's clean, the people take time for cleaning. And then this is a typical look of the packaging room. And then what they are doing here is to checking a tip burn and then trimming the outer leaf for the trimming. And then, so the tip burn is a issue. So now in campus, the new varieties and tip burn resistance uh, variety was developed so that you can accelerate the growth and the larger volume, larger heads of lettuce. So also the strawberry production Nishimbo that started the strawberry production in 2011. Yeah, this is a US company, but I mean, uh, the Hirokist from Japan, and uh, we are happy to see the Japanese uh, strawberry uh, are in New York, New Jersey. Yeah. So speaking of productivities, uh, this is a little bit old um, data, but roughly speaking, the strawberries and cherry tomato productivity has to be double or triple. Um, so you see, but this is a, uh, already published paper, so you can see details in the paper. So we said that, uh, that because I mean, lots of company are using, saying that we are profitable, but we started, we wanted to set the terminologies and also the set the formula for, to compare the productivity. So we discussed with the, we had a committee meeting with the industry people and academia, and we defined the productivity and then this is the, range of the um, per cultivation area per square meter per day or canopy area. Uh, so some company are higher than this, um, but some company are intentionally lower than this because this is not a yield. This is a sellable produce in the pack um, because some people or some company uh, have a less productivity because 
the customer wants smaller plants and then you, they are taking more for the hygiene management. So details you can find in the book chapter. So there's a lot to discuss about, about in terms of environment, but even the optimal uh, PPFD for photosynthesis, um, it's really complicated because it's affected by other environmental factors. So optimal PPFD, it depends, it'll change depending on the temperature or you consider the air current speed or CO2 concentration or relative humidity or temperature. So, I mean, we all have to think, think I mean, in a different angle and integrate other factors as well. And also economically optimal PPFD depends also on the desired quantity or density or growth space. And uh, so that smart lighting system we all are looking for. I think we, many people are working on this. So for the next generations, uh, there are many things to work on together, but um, obviously we want to have the scalable module system and also the plant phenotyping for the individual plant for research, I think we think it's important. And also controlling the three dimensional environment factor within the canopy. Um, and also we want to produce more fruits, fruits or head vegetables or medicinal plants and other many, many important research topics. So this is an interesting paper that can see the difference in 2D two-dimensional distribution so that the PPFD, the variation of PPFD in the canopy is different if you have plants and you have more variations and if you have plants. And also um, the required PPFD uh, change if the plants are grown. Uh, so many to do research. So the next generation, we want to achieve this. So we want to determine the optimal set of environmental factors to maximize the given multi-objective function. So if you are um, the manager, you are the one who actually set the goal. But then with the help of integrating the phenotyping camera and sense unit, non-invasive system, um, and then continuous measurement, and then you get the and then considering the market price, whether outside in external condition, and then with the help of AI, we will we'll keep have, determine the optimal set point in real time. But then uh, you always find uh, it's a very interaction, interaction is very complicated, the uh, plants and the microenvironment management, they always change, keep each other. Um, and also the management is also important. Uh, this is a, an example of the difference of the variety, the same crops. Um, the change of the, here you see the volume of the neutral solutions larger in the bottom, the small water on the up. And just after 10 days after sowing, you get to see the difference. So even the variety, the different variety, um, if the quantity of water, change, so you have a different vary on the germination rates. So the management matter as well. So to expect the benefit of uniform environment, we have to achieve first, especially more uniform environment, and then we can achieve the special more uniform phenotype, and then we can simplify the environment the phenotype relationship. So we we want to figure out the three-dimensional environment of this highly densely plant um, so that we started the project in 2017, the methodology called co plant cohort research to appreciate that plant individual um, so that to, from sowing to harvest, even before sowing, the seed phenotyping and then all the data uh, continuously go to the, in, the data warehouse environment management, uh, hopefully genotype and go there. So P uh, equal function G E M, and then we'll figure out their things. But the plant phenotype, there's many things. And uh, ideally like uh, sensory uh, tests, or like aroma or taste or flavor, those are things want to be optimized, we all hope, but also that we might also start with a three dimensional structure or the area. Oh, uh, the leaf area, even the leaf area is really tricky because if it's a leaf, uh, 
overwrapped, uh, it's not easy to see. So I wanted to share this uh, called the uh, Japanese animation. I'm not sure if you are familiar with this, this um, very common Doraemon, but the, he, this future, the robot came from um, the future, helped this boy. He is always crying, not good at school, he can't do sports, but he's very, just goodness is he's very kind and brave. So every time he has a problem, his robot give him an like, interesting tool. So this one, I really, I really like this tool. So if you wear this glass, so, so this was, um, this was the written like many, many years, 10 or 20, 30 years ago. So this glass and you fit, you get the leaf from the plant that you want to be, and then you wear this glass and you can actually be inside the plants. So you can get the visual sense of plants. So you can, so not only to, check the leaf area, but also the response to the environment. But we want to achieve this, I think. Like you want to understand how plants feel. So that since our plants are, um, cannot be a very complex, so we started with a simple one, the germination or seedling production, phenotyping. So the uniformity is not that, not easy, so even, just 10 days after sowing, you start seeing not uniformed. So this is caused by the difference of the germination time. So we developed a simple tool, the Raspberry Pi and the thermal camera, and then to assess the germination time of individual plants, but also how to see how it was affected by the microenvironment and the management factors. So this is one of the example of the experiment a different temperature and a coated seed and uncoated seed and then different volume of water. And you see even at same varieties, but you see that germination time is different. The uniformity is different. So this one was the fastest and most uniformed. And also each single plot represent each individual seed Then you can see the germination time is different. And this SST stands for the seed surface temperature. So it's not the air temperature, but the seed surface temperature. And it was interesting to see that the difference of seed coated seed and non uncoated seed, because when the temperature was a lot higher, like above the 30 Celsius degree, uh, coated seed was still germinated, but uncoated seed was not germinated. But uh, in contrast, uh, when we, uh, the, we have less water um, and then the uncoated seed was, the germination rate was higher and coated seeds germination was really low with less water. So it's interesting to think, it's just an example of you know, how this is affected by the environment and the management. And also the air temperature was different from the seed surface temperature. And also we can keep doing that with a, a frequent image um, capturing, and then we can get um, the cotidian unfolding time or the truly found folding time or the projected leaf area every 30 minutes. Um, and then we figure out that uh, cotidian unfolding time um, like what this, like sometimes change different, like a 20 hours, but also it's interesting to see the find the outlier. So it might be used for the breeding that to find a really good seed. And also the interesting to see that each, uh, this is one single line represents one single plant, but um, it's, it's interesting to track the movement so that the plants are moving and I'm also uh, they are expanding more in a dark period. So the, my point is that just uh, this is example, but you can share this kind of data and then the different experts can analyze from different perspective and you can you reproduce the, I mean, the experiment, you can even go back and you can figure out what was the effect, cause and effect of the same symptom. So you can not even, anymore you can blame for the climate. <laughs> then also um, 
it was interesting to see the more the higher you have a growth rate, the more variation you have. And you might notice this here, the integrated PPFD. This means that since we figure out the exact uh, cotidinal unfolding time for individual plants so that each have a different integrated PPFD. So that it, since this experiment, we have just uh, the dark period for the cotidinal unfolding time, but we might affect the integrated PPFD. So those kind of data can be collected and then be shared and then to reproduce ability and evolution for the research outcome. Um, so for the sustainable development goals and then, but I myself think that the poverty issue is crucial. And then the reason that I'm, I've been working in this industry is that we, I believe that this technology we can help solve the poverty issue because we have to di start discussing how we can um, use this technology to make that better. And also in, instead of collecting cans and then we, the kids can um, use this small system and with smartphones and then maybe they can help you find the ultimate set point and growing medicinal plants and being the citizen scientist, uh, not even though you are not the professor. Um, then also the Japanese government have this science and technology basic plan called the Society 5.0. It's a human centered society. So center one has studied for the hunting, gathering, agriculture, industrial information, and finally human centered society and that balance economic advancement with the resolutions of social problem by a system that highly integrates cyberspace and physical space. So when I see this, when I saw this first time, I thought it completely come up together with Plant Factory. And also we are always discussing the web 3.0, so the decentralizing system. So we have to achieve the distributed uh, farming system. So um, we have had a privilege and introduced by the Japanese comics about the introduction of the, um, the our associations. Um, this is uh, Professor Kozai. I was I like this because it really looks like him. <laughs> and then I was uh, I was I was introduced like this is a comic, so it was. Um, a lot exaggerated and in a very in a joke in a funny way and I don't eat lettuce this way like doing this like a tasty like this but um, this was me like how it was introduced but anyway so my point is that just like we had the air conditioner while achieving and uh, trying to aim the autonomous car but we should and we should have a freedom to enrich our life and then to achieve the distributive farming system. Like you want to have the vitamin C rich um, let, um, vegetables so good for your health. And then, and then you don't always need to buy. And of course you can buy, but I mean, we have to have a choice I mean, to enrich our life. And this is, this is gonna be happen soon, I think, I believe. And it all can be connected with data and then also connected with a uh, consumer and then uh, retailers or also um, the researcher or breeder or um, the, um, anyway, I personally think the farmer can be a breeder as well, like, um, because we want to produce seed, maybe um, some people want to produce seed by themselves and then honestly, so you have to empower the farmer because I mean, farmer doesn't always have the power to decide the price, even though they have a know-how, so we have to change this system. And also, and then we have, we can learn a lot from how plants communicate each other, the plant response, and then we can have the, we can enjoy the plant-based um, entertainment, social community. So to create the shared value for inclusive and sustainable society, so the integrated value of plant safety, but also not only plants, but also we can utilize this closed environment um, production system with uh, insect farming or other aquaculture, other system, or other food system. And we need to uh, collaborate more with other sectors and other expertise as well. And also not only engineering science, we also have to work more with the design and including social design and art itself. I personally have a experience going to art school and then that helped me a lot doing the experiment because you can, you have to immediately fig figure what's the 
I mean, the future of the plants in a different. So it's also good for your business because you have to synthesize with people and you have to understand the communication with others. But anyway, so this was the last slide and I would like to thank Harry uh, for I me mean, organize this and I know there's a lot of work, appreciate it. I'm so happy to be invited here and Erico as well. I'm happy that we have a similar name as well. And, then, and of course, the professor, Dr. Neil Matson for having me. And also the Dr. No, I mean, Norman Scott, the reason that I'm in United States right now, Cornell, is that um, because of his um, program. I appreciate, I feel honored. And also I wish I could meet uh, Dr. Wu outright, but I hope he is watching us. Yeah, thank you very much. Great, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. Let's just get right into some questions. Uh, our first question is, I'm wondering about the economic viability of artificially lit plant factories compared to sunlit plant factories or greenhouses. Uh, can sunlight be used in vertically stacked farms too? Is there any research into this? Uh, I think in the audience, there are many ones wanting to answer this, but uh, there are, it's a very common comment that, uh, but also in the greenhouse, I mean, you, you can utilize um, lighting, but also you have to always um, consider it costs the cooling power as well. So um, I think there is a great research paper, a couple of great research papers that compare the um, those kind of issues. I, I think I'm not the right one to answer, but yeah, <laughs> probably if anyone wants to answer, but maybe I think answer. But um, yeah, but also like anyway, we have to achieve 100% clean energy power, the sustainable system. So we are not there yet for sure. So this is something we have to work on. And also that CO2 emission, and also we are using lots and lots of plastic. I think it's the same in greenhouse industry. And also to construct the, the plant factory that as more than half, there's a study that more than a half 50 is you under use and the emission of the and consumption of the CO2 is for construction. All right, great. Another question, maybe a hard question, but Yuri, mm -hmm. you have visited plant factories in Japan and the US and other countries. Do you uh -huh. know, do you know? Test differences between the industry in Japan versus in other countries? Oh, there's many things. I mean, I it's hard to generalize, I think, because each company I work in, in any country is tremendously, they are great, great jobs and a great team, I think. But in general, I think that, for example, like uh, most um, obvious one is like uh, investment environment is different. So the United States that you can see um, some of the company, a lot of company are getting um, venture capital investment, a lot of money. Um, but on the other hand, Japanese company are on the bank loan. So it's not the environment on environment is different for the investment. Um, and I think the Japanese company are more like a Toyota Kaizen system, like improving the little things and getting better. Um, and, but I think on the other hand, it's good to create some very innovative dynamic change if you have a bigger team and the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And also you have to have a good manager with a good vision. And then, but uh, this is like a starting industry, as I said. So it's, I mean, I think non-competitive, non I mean, things that we have to work together. I think everyone is feeling the same, I guess, instead of st st starting from the scratch. Great. So energy cost is a big concern for uh, plant factories and indoor ag. Do you have any suggestions what uh, research is going into making energy more efficient in these operations? Mm. Yeah, because um, there are lots of I mean, improvements in the past, of course, a lot in terms of hardware, like um, the efficacy, efficiency have improved. But also, um, as I said, like a clean energy, like a sustainable system, how you 
supply the electricity is one thing. And also there's a lot that we can achieve the light uses efficiency because we are just wasting the light because I mean, the light, the plant is needing the, I mean, the light, but I mean, uh, I mean, this is the same as that we use. The picture is almost the same as we have for human in the building. So, I mean, there's, a, for example, there's one of the paper sheet LED, for example, so you can shape, change the shapes and, and others. But anyway, so, I mean, we have to first visualize that how much energy is waste. And then also the, the value of the PPFD or the, the, the thing that we think is actually not that so it's, it's changing. So I mean, so that visualization, the first step, I guess. Thank you. We have a couple of questions about species being worked on in plant factories. So you've mentioned lettuce and strawberries. What other, culti what other cultivars and species are being researched to use in these settings? Mm. Yeah, so... Um, Historically, I think it's the same in the United States because historically NASA has been working on a lot of produce for many, many years. Um, and historically, the, um, the technically, the, you, in the hydroponic system, you can grow anything. It's just a matter of the economics. And, then, and also each crop has a different requirement for lighting. So and then lots of research have been done for medicinal plants, for herbs, and even tomato or strawberries or others and even the head lettuce and then there's some commercial production for head lettuce but I like to do the cabbage or the and we have studied some some cabbage as well but yeah and the roots roots um, plants as well nice but um I mean let me say that um maybe I'm just saying extreme but you know I mean, just we, we are talking about the fresh produce, but um, there's some like biopharmaceutical produce, and then it's just application of plants how we use, like a plant made um, produce. And then also, this uh, the earring that I'm wearing is uh, it's made of plants, and it's a goes on the golden glass that it, when it's dry, it's not painted, it's when it's dried and it's get this color. So it's really light, and then it's only in Brazil, but uh, you know. I, we want to grow many plants and it's a hidden plant in many countries. And you want to reproduce those different and the same environment in different regions. It's fun, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we are just about at three o'clock. So I'm going to cut questions off there, but if you have more questions, I'm sure that you can email Erie and get those answered look in, more into her research. So thank you so much once again for presenting. That was such a great presentation and discussion. And thank you everyone for joining. And we'll have that recording up either tomorrow or in the next few days so that you can watch it again. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs>